I am now 33. I have carried the burden of these memories and the hate around for 18 years, despite becoming a committed Christian two years ago. It was the one part of my life that was simply a no-go. Don't go there. I was desolate. How could I possibly forgive John for what he had done? Where would be the justice in that? I was a child. I was the victim. I haven't seen him since I was 15. He wasn't even asking for forgiveness. But the combination of the marriage course and Philip Yancey's book, What's So Amazing About Grace, and God's work in my life enabled me to see clearly that I needed to deal with this once and for all. Unless I wanted 18 years to turn to 30, then 38 and 48 and so on, there would be no end. I prayed, laid, lay awake for several nights, cried, and prayed some more. Then I wrote a letter to John, forgiving him for the hurt and anguish I had experienced as a child in his care. As I wrote, I had no idea if he was even aware of the impact that that part of his life had had on mine. I decided to leave that part up to God. But I knew as I posted the letter that I had been set free. Jennifer's stepfather made um, contact with her. He was unable to see the damage that he had caused or why he needed her forgiveness. Despite his response, Jennifer still experienced that complete freedom from the pain that he had caused her. It's not always appropriate or even possible to express our forgiveness to our parents, um, particularly, particularly if they're not even aware of the pain that they've caused. But with God and before God, we can say, I choose to forgive and ask God to set us free from that buried, buried hurt and anger. So I like to think that God made us like a stream. He's, he made us freely freely flowing, just flowing and crystal clear. The hurts and angers you feel from your past has com completely contaminated and polluted your stream. So God made you free flowing and clear and life has polluted it. Sometimes we choose not to let go of the hurts and pains of the past. We quietly just bury them. We just keep putting them deep inside um, of our hearts and minds. We'll just think that it'll go away, but it won't. Um, that contamination that's made your stream really muddy and murky, that's going to show up in your life. Okay? It's bound to happen. And what usually happens is that contamination not only affects you, it then affects your family. And it's usually the ones closest to you. It's your spouse and your children. That's usually, and your spouse and children especially are the ones that, that need to partake in your, in your stream, in you. And when it's muddy and murky, that's where those problems start. So you want to deal with it today. You want to forgive anyone who's hurt you and then choose to live in the freedom and freshness that God set forth. Um, that's what God wants. He doesn't want that contamination there. As you do this, the joy of the Lord will just burst forth. Um, so if you're having difficulties with your own family, it's important that you, open, that you be open to healing these past injuries so you can move forward. Okay, so you move forward with your spouse. Um, it is forgiveness that deals with anger. And then God heals that pain. And then, <clears throat> I just feel like... You're fine. All right. After you've, you've gotten to that point, which is easier said than done sometimes, the only thing you can do is look to God and move on. I mean, I mentioned it earlier in relationship with my family. We've tried to talk about it. It's tough because we have our own lives now, and it hurts that they don't want to spend time with us, but at the same time, we know that they love us, and that they're looking at us with heartbreak, because, I mean, you know, I was talking in the back, it, they quite honestly, it, there's no way to go around it, they think we're going to hell, period, and it just crushes them, and so we don't know how to get past that. And so we've had to get to the point where we dealt with it as well as we can, and now we just have to look to God and move on, and keep moving forward. We have to remember that there's, there's nothing that isn't in God's power to heal or to restore, and that we should be willing to, to ask God to heal any of these kind of things. We should be willing to ask God to heal these things for our spouse. Um, you, we can ask Him to help us be a better parent. Also, we can ask Him to help fill what's missing in us. God has a vast reservoir of love for each one of us. Uh, Jeremiah 31.3 says, I have loved you with an everlasting love, and I am constant in my affection for you. The Bible is full of God's promises and His affection for you and His commitment to you. Um, things like, I will never leave you nor forsake you, or perfect love casts out all fear. Just that God wants to pour out that healing into our lives 
and he promises that he will. Um, we're going to wrap things up tonight. I wanted to leave you with uh, some time. And what we'd like for you to do, if you feel comfortable and you can, is spend some time in prayer with your spouse. Whether it's about tonight's issue, an issue from the night before, whatever it may be, just spend four minutes just praying together. Um, quietly just holding hands together. So we're going to just play a little song and, and let you have that time of prayer. Of prayer. I also want to read a few scriptures um, out of the Bible to you before we do that. Um, Isaiah 58.11 says, The Lord will continually guide you and satisfy your desire in sun-scorched places. will give you strength to your bones, and you will be a watered garden, uh, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail, like Kim mentioned. And Philippians says, I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. Also, uh, back to Isaiah, it says, So I do not fear, or, or sorry, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not, not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And then finally, some words from Jesus. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. So let's just spend a few, time, a few minutes praying together, and then we'll um, come back up and close in prayer. All right, um, we're going to go ahead and finish with the prayer together tonight. And uh, sorry, I didn't want to rush anybody. But just, uh, Father in heaven, uh, thank you so much is it beyond words for all the blessings that you provide to myself, God, and, and to my family. I also thank you for each of these couples. Um, I thank you that you've been able to protect them, to give them a heart, to protect their marriages, to build their marriages, to um, strengthen their marriages, whatever it may be, Lord, but you gave them that heart to come here. And I continue to pray that you'll be with uh, this course, that that your your name will be glorified and that people will walk away having gotten some understanding through you, Father. Um, it's, it's tonight, as we, we talk about subjects that sometimes can be very sensitive, uh, we thank you for your presence and we ask that as we go home that you would be there to continue in these conversations. Um, whether it's from tonight's topic or, or one of the previous topics, that you, you're there with these couples to, to guide them <clears throat> through it. And uh, we ask that you would protect us all, that we'll be able to get back together after the holidays, that we have good holidays, and God, that we're able to get along with our parents and in-laws through the holidays. So uh, thank you again for your son Jesus. We ask, I ask his prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.